I'm in the Time Warner building at Columbus Circle, and we're about to go upstairs into the Samsung store and talk to Peter Rojas from Engadget, and I think we're going to be talking about gadgets. <laughs> Smartphones still have a long way to go when it comes to really being uh, great devices. With smartphones, there's just all these different platforms. There's Windows Mobile. There's uh, you know there's Symbian with Series 60. There is uh, the Palm OS. Uh, you know there's all these different um, platforms out there that it's very fragmented. And um, from a developer's point of view, it's really hard to sort of create mobile applications that you have any sort of feeling that are going to um, work cross-platform on lots of different devices. And so um, I think that's one thing that's actually really held back. The mobile, uh, the smartphone space. So what's going to be the next big thing for phones? Smartphones, which are originally about productivity, um, like checking your email and your calendar, and they're still going to do all those things, but it's going to um, take on more and more of a multimedia function. So it's also going to be what you do to listen to music and video, and, and sort of it's going to absorb all these other functionalities. We're going to start to seeing more stuff like place shifting, which, um, if you, you know, Slingbox, it's like um, the ability to um, stream your media from that's at home. Um, either store it on your PC or on your TiVo or, or whatever, and stream it over the wireless network to your phone. Do you actually make phone calls? Do you take phone calls? Do you speak via your telephone? I, I try not to, actually. If my trio could only do one thing, email or phone calls, I would actually choose email. as a, It's a little more useful for me. Have you got fast thumbs? I can type really quickly now, yeah. It, it's a little scary how fast I can type. Are you very tricked out yourself in your personal life? Because it's part of your job, so I would imagine that you kind of have to walk the talk? I do have a, a fair number of uh, gadgets in, in the home. Basically it looks like the Samsung experience, my apartment, because um, it's just like flat screens everywhere. Because I have, you know, I have a, three giant LCD screens for my main computer that I work with, and then I have, you know, a giant LCD TV, and then my old LCD TV, and then, you know, a computer just for music. I have like seven laptops, which is really, I, have to, I feel like I have to buy a new one every year, which is kind of yeah. sick. But. I was going to say, you say you buy stuff. Uh, do you not get a lot of stuff for free? People's brands send you things because they want you to talk about their gadgets? So people do send us stuff, but um, we're pretty good about giving away on the site or sending it back um, when we're done with it. And if I want something, I buy it. I mean, I got a new, uh, I get people, you know, Samsung, Sharp, who, Panasonic, they'll send, we'll send you any TV you want, any size. You can always make more money, but it's really hard to buy back your credibility and your reputation once you've sold it. I get a lot of requests about uh, what TV should I buy. A lot of interest right now in, in high definition, but still a lot of confusion over all the different standards. Uh, one of the things I always tell people when you're buying a, a, an LCD TV or a plasma TV is actually go with one of the, the more premium name brands because unlike a lot of other things, um, you actually do get what you pay for. The Zoom thing was hilarious, by the way. The problem is so few people have Zooms that uh, the odds that you're going to sort of randomly stumble upon somebody else's Zoom and be able to share music with them, very, very limited. And so far, it's nothing that I've experienced. And I live in Manhattan, right? It should be one of the, the, the highest concentrations of gadget owners in you know, the Western world. And uh, my Zoom has yet to uh, lose its virginity, so to speak, um, and mate with another Zoom. I guess it's an exclusive kind of thing. It's, um, it's a very lonely life. Lonely Zune 15. What else are you up to? What, what else are you uh, doing and engaging in for Engadget? <laughs> now, right now we're getting ready for the Consumer Electronics Show, which is uh, in early January. And um, I describe it as sort of the, the most hellish week of my year. It's um, completely exhausting. It's really draining. You work 16 hours a day, 20 hours a day. Um, we do 150 posts a day during CES. We do a daily podcast. We're doing video, all this stuff, and it's really we try to cover that show in real time in, in a way that's so comprehensive that um, people that even are at the show tell us that the only way they made sense of the show was to actually read our coverage, and that people would talk about how they were walking around the show floor and they would be reading our coverage on their cell phone. One last question: What's the most lo-fi gadget that you own? Well, I own. Um, I own, a, I own a bunch, actually, but I own a typewriter, a royal typewriter um, from the 30s that um, my grandmother was a typist in the 30s, and uh, she gave it to me a, a few years ago, and um, for, for years, actually, I, I, I wrote, did my correspondent, not, not my email, but if I was going to send somebody a letter, I'd write it on this typewriter, and it has a really great vintage uh, look to it, Ret kind of retro emo thing going on. Collector's item. It absolutely is. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you.